Hello everyone and welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. Wonderful panorama of my 20 gallon Oase Aquarium, uh, heavily planted, duh. And uh, as the green neons are pretty much out and about, as well as that lovely honey garami and some other critters that <laughs> bodacious mystery snail right there. Uh, I thought I'd give a video update because sometimes when I uh, film this particular aquarium, not all the denizens uh, are cooperating, but it appears they are right now. So boom, let's have a look. Okay, so there's 24 green neon tetras, a lovely species, slightly more exotic than the standard neon tetra. It's really more blue than green, if you ask me, but maybe that's because compared to the green um, hair grass, it's popping blue, but these are green neon tetras. Um, they're more uh, intensely blue-green colored than their counterparts, and they don't have a lot of other distinguishing colors uh, that signify them, uh, unlike the neon or the cardinal that share red and blue and even other colors. I love this fish. I wish it would be more out and about in this aquarium, but it tends to love to go in betwixt and between this Hygrophilia pinifatata, pinifata, pinifata, oh God, it's going to be the death of me saying that. I'm going to put it on my tombstone, spell it out, all right, um, but what a lovely, intense uh, plant this has become for me, in particular in this aquarium. Now the deal is with that plant, it'll grow like a stem, which is awesome in its own right. But if you trim it, like if I cut that, which I will, and keep on cutting the longer growths, you will force this intense bush uh, effect, which although it's pretty much shrouding the spider wood, it's such a, such a captivating uh, and comforting environment uh, both for my eyes as well as those green neons and they love to go in there but they're out now and they're sharing the front and center of the aquarium with the uh, pencil fish the common red bexford pencil fish i've got a group of them in there there's a a big one there's actually about eight there's a there's one back there um, i had two different groups well, the first group I bought online, and then I added a few more. Not sure why I added more. I had this sense that I didn't have a single male, just some big fat females like, like that one. So I got some more in hopes of getting some males. And by now, I, I with 10 of these fish, I know I have, if I didn't already. But I have seen some spawning behavior from those particular fish since I added the new group. Um, uh, they are egg scatterers and they scattered them in there somewhere and um, I'll never see fry because there's just too much life in this tank. Uh, if I were to see a little fish, it would be from them undoubtedly because that's the only creature I've seen spawning in this particular aquarium, uh, not the green neons. Not to say that they haven't, but I haven't seen it. So we've got two, those two groups of nano fish and they seem to get on pretty well together. I was uh, reluctant about adding more pencil fish because honestly, they're just not wonderfully colored, at least uh, with a backdrop of that high grow pea, they sort of get lost a little bit, but if you really study them, they have an intense uh, bronze coloration with some red uh, pigments to it and of course the fins have a little bit of color or, uh, or those neat white indentations which seem to come out when they're sparring or when I saw the spawning and so I, I dig that. More of that please. Got a few of those mystery snails in here. I like the mystery snail because uh, they're easy to see um, they do lay, they lay egg masses, which you can control. You can just pull them out if you don't like them. They'll lay it above the water line. So with a rimless tank, I'm not sure where they're going to ever do that. And in any event, unlike ram's horns or bladder snails, uh, they won't overpopulate. And if you want to raise them up, 
which I am attempting to do with an egg cluster. Uh, you can, otherwise you can just remove the egg cluster and, and keep the adults. They're always mating, but um, the females, I'm not sure where they would go to deposit those egg clusters. I've also got a growing colony of these wonderful uh, fire red cherry shrimp. I mean, look at the color on that, that's crazy. I got those online from eBay uh, and you can get 10 plus two or 20 plus two. The price was great. And honestly, I've never gotten quality cherry shrimp like that before in my life at an LFS or online. Um, just so beautiful. I believe uh, the eBay account is Nisi, N-I-S-S-I. So if you search and you'll find, he's got all kinds of shrimp and he's a wonderful vendor, super reputable. They sent me a wrong group and rather than hassle me, they didn't even question my word. They just sent me what I had ordered and I, ha I kept what they had sent, uh, which was incorrect. They also sell Amano shrimps and I have some in here as well, although I don't see any currently. And if any of you film for YouTube, uh, it's pretty hard to search for specific fish while you're making a video. Um, there's some cherry shrimp. There's really quite a bit of them in there and they're obviously spawning. I'll, I'll, uh, there's a baby there and there's another one there um, and so on and so forth. So that's great. They're not being predated and it looks like their offspring are carrying that intense red gene. It's a little white on its nose, but um, pretty great. I highly recommend you find that vendor if you're interested in Neo Caradina shrimp. It was super good value and super good quality and he has all different kinds. I've also got some Pygmy Coriadora in here. Actually the Hasbrosa strain, so a little bit bigger than Pygmy Coriadora, but not much bigger. There's one right there. But in this tank, they're maxing out on their size, which looks to be um, an inch and change. And I've got Otto Sinkless, there's one there. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. The honey garami, which you can have as a solo fish. So you can have that one intense burst of color and he or she doesn't uh, mind being alone. At least, I mean, you can't ask them, <laughs> but uh, that's what the book is on those particular uh, fish. Super lovely, very inexpensive. You could put one in each of your nano tanks, pretty much no matter what you have uh, and they'll be fine. I'm not sure how they would get on as a group or as two or three. Most fish, if they uh, are aggressive in groups of two or three, uh, you add more and that can mitigate the aggression. Um, but with a honey garami, you just need the one and it's a lovely way to, uh, I don't know, alleviate any monotony or monotone like from those pencil fish, which honestly, unless you really study them and appreciate that great body type i will say that it's like a tuna like an ocean tuna real muscular has a powerful body type uh great pointed fins but uh, i'm i'm showing my copywriter uh self i'm selling uh a little too hard because I, they're they're a little boring, what can I tell you? But I've got a group of them and I'm gonna give them their best life. Uh, like I do all my fish, that I wouldn't, um, I can't imagine culling a fish if it's a little bit funky or wonky unless it's in pain or uh, potentially gonna cause a disease or some other ailment with others. But euthanasia, I mean, you know, I, I'll do it if I have to, but I'm certainly not going to just try to offload some fish because I find them boring. Um, I mean, would have, <laughs> well, that's a rabbit hole I won't go into. So I'm starting to ramble and that's no good for YouTube. That's no good for you, but uh, I'm so happy to have been able to share this with you this evening and that the green neons are out and about and this tank is looking really good. I hope you agree, comment, questions, concerns, criticisms, hit me up. I'd love 
to respond and I will. All right, always keep your hands in the tank. Ciao for now.